good old Macintosh SE in a familiar environment, a college classroom. But now there is a color classic, the Centris, new Quadras, new LCs, a color power book, and Macintosh computers are showing up everywhere, from Fortune 500 companies to college classrooms. Today, we'll take a look at the new Macs on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me today is Jim Martin, Senior Associate Editor with Macworld Magazine. And Jim, you guys at Macworld have just finished reviewing all the new Mac computers here in your latest issue, one of which is, of course, the Color PowerBook. Tell me about the Color PowerBook. What's the benefit of color in a portable like this? Well, it's particularly nice if you're a salesperson and you travel a lot and you need to make presentations to prospective clients. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to have the color information, color images on your screen. And you can also hook it up to an external monitor if you need to do that and show the, the same images on yeah, the display. What's the cell. technology on the display? It's a passive matrix technology. And among the passive matrix screens out there, this is probably the best one. Um, it's not quite as sharp or as accurate as an active matrix screen, mm -hmm. but it's pretty good in and of itself. Now, you've got an application on here that, that would sort of show me why I would want color in a, in a traveling piece of software? Yeah, uh, this program is designed specifically for business travelers, and uh, it's got color-coded information on hotels, restaurants. It's called Local Expert from Strategic Mapping. So you can take it with you, figure out what hotel you want to stay in, what restaurant, yeah. and boom, you're the done. The color helps me use the software. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, today we will look at all of the new Macs, the Centris, the Quadra 800, the LC3, and the Color Classic. The product launch for all these new Macintosh computers took place in an unusual venue, the Macworld Expo in Tokyo. We're going to start today by taking you to the world's largest Mac Expo in Japan, where Apple CEO John Scully announced the new Macintosh line. Today marks the largest single product introduction in Apple's history. Six new CPUs plus two new printers. Today is also a celebration of the shipping of the 10 millionth Macintosh. Over the past four months, Apple has introduced 15 new products, including desktops, notebooks, peripherals, and software. In all product areas, Scully says the company is focusing on what has always been Apple's strength, multimedia. With the desktop products, you will see us adding more and more innovation with multimedia, building CD-ROM drives in, for example, into many of our new products. We have much wider bandwidth, higher bandwidth I.O., the ability to communicate uh, multimedia images in collaboration between work groups with our desktop systems. You'll see us introducing greater capability for imaging, where we can now handle photographic quality images, both in the computer and also on printers. We can bring in those images through Photo CD, or we can bring those images in through our scanner products. And this year, we've just introduced our first one-button color scanner. Perhaps as important as the new product well, we announcements was Scully's statement that Apple was planning to expand beyond the computer hardware and software business into computer services. In the future, when somebody buys a personal computer from Apple, that is the beginning of the relationship with Apple because we will be entering into new businesses that are service businesses. And we have just announced our first Apple online service, which is an extension of the work that we have done for many years internally called Apple Link. And this is going to become a uh, public-based service on a global basis, uh, one which we think will have considerable importance in the mobile systems area. Apple's entry into the mobile area will be strengthened later this year with the introduction of Newton, its first PDA product. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson.
So let's start with the lower end of the new Mac line, the Color Classic and the LC3. And here to show us those machines are Claire Dean and Dave Dates of Apple Computer. Claire, let's start with you. And let me first of all ask you about the little sign on the Color Classic, the 10 millionth Macintosh. Is that in fact the 10 millionth Mac? It is. It is the 10 millionth Macintosh. Since the introduction of the first Mac in 1984, Apple has shipped over 10 million computers. And who gets to keep that one? The Apple Museum. Okay, that's fair enough. Show us a little bit about the Color Classic. What's new about it, Claire? Okay, it is a classic, so it's very simple to use. It's, everything is built in, um, and it's very affordable. Now it has brilliant color. This is a 10-inch Trinitron display. Mm -hmm. It comes with 256 colors built in, and you can easily upgrade to thousands of colors. Uh, we didn't just stop at adding color. We also added expansion. So there's an LC processor direct slot mm. built in, and we've built in a microphone right here. All right, you've also added some stuff to the control panel mm -hmm. on this version, right? Because this is an integrated unit, we can control the display. So what we've been able to do is add a special energy saving feature. This control panel allows you to turn on the feature. And once it's on and the computer sits for a period mm -hmm. of time, the display will power down. Mm. And simply by touching the key or touching the mouse, the display will come back up. When it's in that sleep mode, it saves over 50% of the power. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, now you mentioned expandability. How do you do that in a classic? How can I open a classic up? Well, before it was very difficult. Right. You had to have a special tool that we called the case cracker. Yeah, right. This time we've made it very easy. If you want to install an expansion card, like the Apple II emulation card, uh -huh. or NTSC video out, you simply pull off the back panel and pull out the logic card. Nice. Okay, that's the color classic. Let's turn now, Dave, to you and the LC3. What's new in the 3 version of the LC? Okay, well, the Macintosh LC line appeals to a very broad audience. There are a lot of people that are looking for a versatile, low-cost personal computer, and the LC line is Apple's most successful mm. line. What we did with the LC3 is really build on the success of the LC2. We talked to customers and asked them what they'd like to see us enhance, and really there are three themes that emerged, performance, additional memory expansion, and additional display support. So the LC3 is Apple's fast, versatile, and affordable slimline Mac. It does share the same slimline design as the LC2. Uh, there's a few other enhancements it offers. It does have now a socket for an optional floating point unit. So mm -hmm. if you want a math coprocessor, you can add one. Uh, in terms of display support, you can now have actually up to 16-inch displays directly connected without having to buy a video card. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you, what do you have up here? Just give us a little run through of a piece of software on okay. the LC3. Okay, well, as I mentioned, there's broad appeal for the LC line, and one of the markets that's been very big in addition to home and business is K through 12. Uh -huh. What I have here is a little interactive education application for kids, and it really showcases some of the color as well as the sound that's built into the LC3. What we can do here is have. Uh, What's the program called? Dave? This is called Yearn to Learn uh -huh. by Image Smith. Okay. Here's the World War One flying ace. Sitting with a young lass in a small cafe near the border. So here kids can learn how to read. And if mm -hmm. they have a particular question on a word, Bored they can it. click on it, hear the word. There's also some neat little animations. Bread. Uh -huh. That you can see there. Yeah. And Snoopy can guzzle <coughs> beer, etc. <coughs> so this is really just a neat uh, program here for kids as they're learning how to read. Right and taking advantage of the sound and, and the color of the LC3. Okay. Dave and Claire, now, th these two machines, the Color Classic and the LC3, are pretty close in price. Help a buyer decide if you want to get into one of these Color Macs. Do you buy the Classic? Do you buy the LC3? What, what are the, the factors involved here, Claire? Well, the suggested retail prices of this system and just the computer system are relatively the same. Mm -hmm. For the LC3, you'd need to purchase a monitor uh -huh. for it. So if you look at system price to system price, they're roughly about $300 difference. Okay. So features? For the Color Classic, it's a 16 megahertz O30 microprocessor. With the LC3, you'd get 25 megahertz. Uh -huh. so it's about twice the performance. So you're getting more speed over there on the LC3. Right. And on the Color Classic, you'll have the all-in-one all design, and it's very easy to transport. Yeah. And Dave, what would you say in terms of the LC3? Yeah, along with what Claire said, uh, there's a couple differences also. I mean, both of them do support Ethernet networking as well as Apple IIe emulation. You can mm -hmm. put in a card into the slot on either one. A couple other things uh, for the LC is that there is an upgrade path for LC and LC2 users. 
If they want to take advantage of the features of the LC3, they can upgrade. And again, as Claire said, this is very transportable. The Color Classic is. For those that do want a modular design, the LC3 is a right. good pick. And by the time you're done, you're saying the Classic is less expensive, in fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, thanks a lot. Well, if you're not sure whether you want a desktop Mac or a PowerBook, there is one Macintosh computer that lets you have both. That's, of course, the new PowerBook Duo with the Duo Dock. David Kersey is the editor of PC Letter, a newsletter for executives in the computer industry. Kersey travels frequently and needs to access his company's network wherever he goes. To do that, he takes his PowerBook with him and uses AppleTalk remote access software. Kersey says AppleTalk, along with his 14.4K modem, lets him work as though he were at his desktop. And back at the office, his computer appears to be running by itself as he accesses it remotely. Other networks offer the ability to dial in and offer remote control programs. But again, the Apple Macintosh does it with such ease of use that it really is as though you are on the network, and then the network itself is so easy to use that it doesn't pose particular problems for just a typical business executive user out in the field. When Kersey does return to the office, he brings his PowerBook with him. The 4.2-pound computer comes out of his briefcase and pops into the Duo dock to become his desktop workstation. The Apple PowerBook Duos and the Duo docks are a real advance in portable computing because they allow one machine to serve both as your desktop and as your portable. It's very easy to take the 4.2-pound portable unit out of the docking station and carry it with you. Then all of the changes you make to your files are with you when you come back to the office. Remember now to back up those files someplace on your local area network. This is a great machine for offices which support Apple Macintoshes, but it's also a good machine for someone who needs a computer at home because there is such close file compatibility today between Macintosh applications and the same application running in Microsoft Windows. This would be a good machine for someone to have at home. You'd have the portable. You would also have a nice desktop machine that you could use. Very few compromises, very high performance. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. The new word for Mac users is Centris, the new mid range product line from Apple. And here to show us two new Centris models are Dave Dates again and Dave Limp of Apple. Dave, let's start with Dave number one over here. We just looked at the two low-end things, uh, the Classic, Color Classic, and the LC3. We're maybe going up 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks now. What do I get in the Centris line now I didn't get in the LC line? All right, the Macintosh Centris line is really targeted to mainstream business users and professionals. They're systems that are fast, flexible, and expandable, and they're bringing also some state-of-the-art microprocessor technology, Motorola 68040, into the mid-range now. So is this sort of the new Mac 2 line, essentially, the Centris? In, in essence, the mid-range of the product line is now the Macintosh Centris line. Okay, now you've got, your product is the, the Mac Centris 610. That's right. Okay, tell us about the machine and then show it off a bit. All right, the Macintosh Centris 610 is really a response, again, to customer demand and customer input. A lot of people do like the slimline design of the LC, so we tried to maintain that design language with the Macintosh Centris 610. Uh -huh. As you can see, it's low profile. On the other hand, multimedia is now a big uh, thing in the industry, so we're incorporating here in the middle a bay that can accommodate an internal CD-ROM player. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, it has the 040, as I mentioned. So the performance, if you're familiar with the 2CI, it's about two times the performance of the Macintosh 2CI. Oh. All right, well, show, show off the performance here. Run something right. that shows me how fast this is. Well, as you know, a lot of content is becoming digital now, and there's mm -hmm. a great application here by all this called Fetch, which allows you to easily catalog and retrieve digital content. So what I have here is little thumbnails of information I have stored, and I can open things up like a sound file just by double-clicking, and I can play the sound. So there's stereo sound out that's built into the Macintosh Centris 610. QuickTime movies are also something that people are really taking advantage of, so we can run a QuickTime movie directly here from mm -hmm. Aldous Fetch. And if I want to look at great images, lots of color, vivid colors, I can pull up an image and uh, take a look at it here. And once it's on the screen, I can cut and paste it and put it into any other application that I want. Okay, that's the 610. Let's yes. turn to Dave Limp now and move up the line one more notch to the 650. What's the difference now? What do I get for going to the 650 rather than the 610 Centris, Dave? The Macintosh Centris 650 is more expandable and higher performance than the 610. It comes standard with three 32-bit wide new bus slots, mm -hmm. as well as a 68040 microprocessor running at 25 megahertz. 
that's about a 30% increase over the 610. And if you measure it against the Macintosh 2 CI, the 650 can perform up to three times yeah. as fast as a, six, as a CI. Dave Bates, let me turn back to yeah. you. On the expandability, I mean, Dave says three slots right. here. What do you get on the 610? Well, the Macintosh Centra 610 is really for people who want a highly responsive computer and don't want to pay for a lot of extra expansion slots. So we've built in support for Apple displays up to 21 inches. We've also built in Ethernet networking, so okay. there is a single expansion slot if people need other things as but well. But for expandability, you're talking 650 right. stuff. Right, and the 650 continues to offer those same types of features, yeah. so you have Ethernet availability as well as a wide range of monitor support on board. All right, can we take a look at the 650? Sure. And uh, what's it telling me right now? Well, right now, this might be a, a problem for some users. The yeah, question you never like to see that question. <laughs> it says it's not finding a bootable device. If mm -hmm. you go ahead and push that in, Okay. Um, we'll see an so I can just boot from the CD-ROM on this? Exactly. A lot of users uh, have a problem with uh, the number of disks that we have to ship to boot a modern computer these yeah. days. And if you're missing the middle disk in the group of, uh, of all the disks, the install may not go properly mm. and you can't finish it. So at Apple, we've used their tightly coupled hardware and software to give a bootable CD with all CD-ROM configurations. So all your system software, mm. all your utilities to repair your machine if it's something has gone wrong, are available right on the CD-ROM. We, we really envision CDs going very, very far, and we're, we're shipping a, a huge number of CDs right now, and we think it's going to be the popular media uh -huh. of the 90s. All right, so what's going on here inside the 650 now? So what's happened is it's gone out and looked at the CD. It's booted up to the screen, and on the screen we have a, a, a simplified user interface called At Ease, mm -hmm. which Apple provides. And there's icons on every one of these folders here that allow you to either reinstall system software or perhaps uh, a fix your disk if something has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. For those users that are looking for the security of having the floppy disks with them, the second folder offers the ability to make backup copies of all your floppies so you can take them with you. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. What are we talking about now in price on the Centris line here, guys, on the 610 level? Well, the entry level configuration for the Macintosh Centris 610 has a suggested retail price of 1859 That's for a 4 megabyte 80 configuration. The monitor would be separate. Right. And the 650? Yeah, the step up to that would be 2699 for the Centra 650, which would uh, enable you, obviously, the more expandability, yeah. more, more performance. And is the Mac 2 line gone now? Yeah, these are basically coming in at the right. mid-range, offering additional price performance. In fact, the entry-level 68040 Macintosh used to be a Quadra 700 for yeah. over 4,000. Now with the Macintosh Centra 610, we brought mm -hmm. it under 2,000. The yeah. 2VX will actually be part of the Centris line. We won't uh -huh. rename it, but it will be a part of this, the message. And as I mentioned earlier, it is upgradable to the 650, uh -huh. so people that buy the 2VX can upgrade. Okay. Well, speaking of which, coming up next, the new Quadra 800, so stay tuned. The new Quadra 800 is faster than the top-of-the-line 950, but less expensive than the older Quadra 700. Here to show us the power of the new Quadra 800, again, Dave Limp from Apple. All right, I guess we're getting up into, what, the four dollars $5,000 range now with the Quadra 800? Exactly. And what am I getting now for the extra money when I go to the Quadra 800 line? Yeah, a lot of our Quadra 700 customers that we went out and talked to before designing this computer, we asked, you know, what would they like to see to, um, for a more, a more powerful computer? And they generally asked for more expandability, which I'm going to show you here in a second, okay. and more performance and functionality. So the 800 really steps up on what the 700 offered. We've increased the clock speed to a 33 megahertz 68040 mm -hmm. processor, which is the same processor found in the 950 and one of the fastest in the industry. On top of that, we've increased the speed of the graphics subsystem. So we have a full VRAM-based graphics system on this machine that allows support up to 21-inch monitors, and you will see thousands of colors on a 16-inch monitor. We've also increased the size and the performance of the hard disks that we offer from Apple. We support much, much faster bandwidth transfer between the hard drive and the main memory, as well as supporting 501 gigabyte drives from Apple. Mm -hmm. All right, you got something you can run on here to show us the speed of this baby? Absolutely. When you, when you tie all these things together, the fast processor, the SCSI, and the video, uh, we get a real tight level of integration. And QuickTime is becoming ever more popular as a desktop video standard. And so I've installed QuickTime on here, and I have a uh, familiar commercial That's loaded. very familiar. That was really 1984. Right. I guess. Yeah, this January. The Super Bowl when you introduced the very first Macintosh. Yeah, this so January. We're almost coming. 10 years ago. Coming up on the uh, the ten year anniversary, right? Okay, kind of for, for just for fun, can we run the that old commercial? Absolutely. You have it all in QuickTime? It's all QuickTime. It's a seventeen megabyte file. 
And most personal computers, to get quarter screen playback like this, this is maxing them out at, yeah. at the most, most you can do. One of the nice things about the Quadra 800 is that we've gone even beyond that with this integration. So I can hit a command key here and actually get full 640 by 480 display on the screen mm -hmm. at almost 30 frames per, per second. So it's really, really fast. I don't watch the end of this commercial. <laughs> it's such a great commercial. All right, uh, let's talk about the box. You're in the tower mode here, and you talked about expandability. Can you take it apart and show me what's inside? Sure, let me show you how it's uh, set up here. You'll turn it off first? I right, guess that's, yeah. Don't try this at home? Exactly, and okay. we'll do a quick turn off here. So I'll pull the cables off here. Oh, somebody screwed this up. Let me just move it up okay, to the center. Yeah. So it's based around a new mini tower design. And we've uh, continued on our use of plastic as well as metal to enclose mm -hmm. this. And thumb screws remove the back panel. And I just slide the top forward, and it becomes unscrewed, and I can remove the cover and set it aside. Maybe move, move that away from there. Okay. Bit, could, uh, okay, go ahead. And it's actually very deceivingly expandable. We have room at the top for a five and a quarter inch device. Here I've installed a CD-ROM, mm -hmm. but it could be a SyQuest drive or other removable media. Below that, we have room for our own floppy drive, which is a 1.44 megabyte floppy. Below that, we have room for a half-height hard disk drive. This is a 500 megabyte drive. And then we have room for either one full-height drive or two more half-height disk drives below that. Mm -hmm. So you can put a lot of devices internal. If we turn it to the side, you'll see that we've mounted the motherboard actually vertical in the enclosure. So without removing the power supply or any of the disk drives, we can drop the motherboard out and increase DRAM or VRAM without ever having to worry about any of the other pieces. Can you do that? Is it easy to drop that board out, or is that complicated? Uh, actually, all you would do is pull this. Uh -huh. not, it's not I see. Down. Okay. There's a screw. Okay. All right. Uh, you can sit down again for a second. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you, if, uh, if you're a Quadra 700 owner, is there, is there an upgrade to the 800? No, we weren't able to offer that because of the drastic change in plastics mm -hmm. and those types of things. One thing that is offered on the Quadra 700 is a processor direct slot. So a lot of third parties are offering up upgrades to 040s at 33 megahertz via that processor direct slot, and that's what it was actually designed for. And what's the difference now, then, again, between this and the 950, which is at the top of the line? Right. The 950 continues to remain in the top of the line as the most expandable Quadra. Uh -huh. It offers uh, five new bus slots versus three. It also s offers support for five and a quarter inch devices internal. So usually the biggest and the fastest hard drives appear in that first. Yeah. It also offers 24 bits per pixel, so if you want to do true color for image manipulation and those types of things, that'd be the choice the for you. Mm -hmm. Dave, thank you very much. That's our look at the new Max. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, Microsoft is gaining ground in establishing the Windows NT standard. Hewlett Packard has announced it will bundle NT with its new Pentium PCs. Compaq says it will support NT on several of its new computer systems. And there are reports that Motorola is licensing the NT operating system for use on its new PowerPC microprocessor. Lightning Computers is offering a 66 megahertz 486 PC for $999 with the trade-in of any 286, 386 Macintosh or Amiga system. The Lightning 486-66 includes 16K internal cache, a math coprocessor, seven ISA slots, and two megs of RAM. Oki Data has introduced a new small footprint LED laser printer with a suggested list price of $699. The OL400E has a 32-bit RISC processor and does 300 DPI at four pages per minute. Aldis is shipping PageMaker 5.0 for the Macintosh. The new version of PageMaker features a new and faster printing engine, advanced text and graphics controls, and improved import-export capabilities. Aldis also announced the release of IntelliDrop 2.0 for both the Mac and Windows. Next up, this week's software review with Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine, provided courtesy of CMP Publications. Today we're going to look at an electronic aquarium for DOS computers called Elfish. As we watch and listen to the opening screens, I'll tell you that there are several simple electronic fish bowls on the market. This one is the most clever and complicated. It can use the built-in speaker on your PC, but you'll get better sound with a soundboard. This program does much better if you run it on a muscular system, say a 386 or 486 with a fast disk. 
By the way, it takes a long time to load since it puts 180 files on your disk. When you're in the main menu, you'll notice your cursor becomes a swordfish, a cute touch. You can design fish, but first you have to catch them. You can control the evolution, breeding, and animation. You're also offered a number of options in tank design. When you're finished, you can certainly rest assured that you have one of the fanciest, most visually interesting electronic fish tanks available. The Moscow-based developers of this program call it Creativity Software, and they aren't kidding. Elfish is $60 from Maxis in Arenda, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. If you'd like to learn about OS2, Ziff Davis has a new book disc combination called PC Learning Labs Teaches OS2 2.1. It's designed for quick and easy OS2 fluency. It sells for $22.95. Belcor of New Jersey has announced a new system for online access to the New Jersey public libraries using Internet. The system, called MoreNet, will let students have direct access to 32 public and academic libraries throughout the state. And finally, if you like to make jokes about lawyers and other professionals, Microcomputer Resources has released an electronic book called Lowdown on Doctors, Lawyers, and Politicians. It includes nearly 800 quotes, quips, and witticisms. List price is $29. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside.